We all know the greats of anime dubbing, right? You know, companies like Funimation, Harmony Gold, Viz Media, and f f 4Kids. Uh, well, here we go. I guess it's about time I talk about 4Kids Entertainment on the Media Chronicle. Yeah, 4Kids in terms of anime dubbing and just overall entertainment was a huge joke to both communities, and despite popular belief, they're actually still around as 4 Licensing Corporation, but they just don't have any of their old licenses. But how did 4Kids get to that point? How did they start out? And more importantly, how did they start losing their valued licenses, which led them to almost go bankrupt? Well, we're gonna find out together as we look through yet another chapter of the Media Chronicle. Now, 4Kids didn't start off as 4Kids, as they were originally called Legere Concepts and were founded sometime in the 80s by Mike Jermakian, who was one of the creators of Thundercats, and Stan Weston, the creator of G.I. Joe. Now, they didn't really get any gigs until 1987 when they signed a licensing deal with Nintendo of America to market the games that went along with the NES. So yes, that means 4Kids is responsible for this monstrosity. It's the Legend of Zelda and it's really rad. Those creatures from Ghana are pretty bad. Yeah, that sure is something to behold. But after that, they really didn't do anything noteworthy until November 17th, 1995, when they changed their name to 4Kids Entertainment Inc. And I'm serious, as most of the sources I'm using for this video don't really show anything for the years of 1988 to 1994. So I guess we should move on to what catapulted 4Kids into popularity, Pokemon. In 1998, 4Kids started dubbing and airing the anime series Pokemon, which was based off the hugely popular RPG series from Nintendo and Game Freak of the same name, even though you probably already knew that one. Anyways, Pokemon was the first anime that 4Kids dubbed and brought to the US, and they were doing it at a time when anime wasn't that big over here aside from maybe Dragon Ball Z. So when Pokemon premiered in 1998 in its first run in syndicated television, it was a huge hit that sold countless DVDs and VHSs and sparked an even bigger nationwide interest for anime along with DBZ. In fact, the Pokemon anime was so successful that it ended up moving from syndicated television to a stable home at Kids WB in 1999, where it got even more popular than it was before. But the thing about the 4Kids dub of the Pokemon anime that wasn't extremely well received was the editing to the show that was done by 4Kids to have it be suitable for television broadcast. Stuff like strong language, guns, and sexual content was cut out entirely in 4Kids dub of the show to not only have it meet the television broadcasting requirements, but to also have the kids who watch the show keep their innocence, which was 4Kids' main goal. 4Kids wanted to make kid-centric entertainment, which meant that their dubs of anime had to be edited in order to fit what 4Kids thought was right for the average American child. But honestly, that only hurt the fans of anime who were teenagers and adults, and since there wasn't that huge of an audience for anime at that time, it mainly got away scot-free and the dub was able to continue throughout the years, along with the dubs of the several sequel series of Pokemon, which achieved the same amount of success as their predecessor. Now, while companies like Funimation mainly stuck with Dragon Ball Z at the time, 4Kids was ready to take on the task of bringing other anime to America, which began a few years after their Pokemon dub's inception, with their dub of Yu-Gi-Oh! in 2001, which was based off the trading card game of the same name that was also making its way to America at the time. Anyways, Yu-Gi-Oh! aired on Kids WB in 2001, and while it didn't even get close to touching the popularity that Pokemon had, it was still considered a huge success, and it sparked interest in the Yu-Gi-Oh! trading card game, which I was a huge fan of when I was a kid along with Pokemon, so it seemed to do its job. Now, at this point, 4Kids could simply live off of dubbing the Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! sequel series, but as any other growing company would try to do, they tried to get even bigger than they already were. So when they were offered the Saturday morning cartoon block on Fox, they obviously ended up taking that offer without hesitation, and in 2002, 4Kids' first ever Saturday morning block, the Fox Box, was born. Now, the Fox Box, in terms of programming, had original shows for 4Kids, and of course they also had the obligatory anime dub that 4Kids would do. But the ones that they did on the Fox Box slash 4Kids TV were probably their most controversial. But before we get to those, the Fox Box overall was an alright Saturday morning cartoon block for Fox. I mean, they couldn't compete with Nickelodeon or Cartoon Network in their Saturday morning blocks, but it was overall not the worst thing that has come out of Saturday morning television. Well, at least at the start it wasn't. You see, around the time of the Fox Box's inception, 4Kids started to acquire a bunch of licenses for anime that may or may not have been a bit too much for what they were trying to do in terms of the productions they made. I mean, they had a few that were suitable for kids like Kirby Right Back at Show, which was actually pretty damn good, but a large amount of the ones that they got were targeted more at the older audience as opposed to the younger one. God knows what 4Kids was doing with these licenses in the first place, but they probably had them because maybe the Japanese studios that produced these anime knew of their recent track record of Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, so they thought they would be able to make the show successful in the US. These two particular anime that I am talking about are Sonic Gex and the thing that really put them in the spotlight for being bad, One Piece. Now in order to save the best one for last, I'm going to be talking about their dub of Sonic X before I even say anything about their One Piece dub. Now, the Sonic the Hedgehog series was pretty popular when 4Kids was in the localization process for Sonic X, so of course, Sega and T 
TMS wanted to bring Sonic X to the West because of Sonic having a huge fan base in the US. Well, just like the previous two anime that 4Kids had dubbed, Sonic X was a show made for a young audience that also contained some swearing, gun violence, alcohol, and all that jazz. So it was obvious that 4Kids would have to edit that out for the television broadcast of the dub. But man oh man did they end up going even further than anyone would think they would. I mean, as we all know, 4Kids was widely known in America for doing these anime dubs, which I guess showed 4Kids in some crackhead way that anime needed more American themes in it. So not only did they severely edit Sonic X more so than any other anime they have ever dubbed, at least at the time, but they also added in American food as opposed to the original Japanese food, removed most of, if not all, of the Japanese text on stores and such, and all in all, they just Americanized the whole show. I mean, yeah, that's what they were set out to do with the license originally, but they were never really supposed to do it over like this. Say what you will about 4Kids dubs of Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, but aside from maybe a few things here and there, they still generally kept the overall Japanese feel that both shows had to begin with, but Sonic X was stripped of everything that represented where it came from, along with it being stripped of several scenes that could have been kept in, but were taken out because 4Kids didn't think that the kids they were marketing to weren't very bright. Not only did they do that, but they also got rid of the, at the time, current voice actors of the games to only replace them with their own in-house voice actors, despite the fact that most of the original cast said they would gladly relocate to where the headquarters was so they could record. 4Kids completely destroyed Sonic X in every way possible, which sucks because they could have made a good English dub of the series to put the original to shame, but they instead decided to go all in with their edits, line changing, and just about everything else that they are known for. Now, it would be right to assume that the next anime that they dubbed would be way better than their Sonic X dub, right? I mean, a company like 4Kids wouldn't want to risk losing their hold in the anime dubbing market, so you'd think they would learn from Sonic X and make their new dub similar to their Pokemon dub, per se. But of course, as we all should know by now, that didn't happen, and what came out of their next dub was the thing that gave 4Kids their own wanted poster with their awful, and I mean completely awful dub, of Toei Animation's One Piece. Now, apparently, 4Kids had absolutely no intentions of dubbing One Piece, despite what you may have heard. 4Kids actually acquired the license to dub the show in a package deal, which I can only assume was with the other anime that they dubbed that was based off a of Shonen Jump manga, Shaman King. As I mentioned before in this video, 4Kids made entertainment that appealed to kids, and One Piece definitely was not for their target audience. So the only way to make the show kid-friendly was to edit it and censor it a whole lot, and of course they did just that, and what came of it was a completely bastardized version of One Piece that has left a huge black mark on the show to even this day. I would be here all goddamn day if I was to go over every single edit that 4Kids made to the show, so to sum it up in a sentence, 4Kids basically gave the Sonic X treatment to the show a few times what they did to Sonic X by 20. All the blood was removed, entire scenes were cut out, which ruined most of the story, and they even skipped a big chunk of episodes just to get to the introduction of the character, Tony Tony Chopper. On top of all that, there was also the removal of cleavage, stupid name changes like Zolo instead of Zoro, and just a large sum of edits that turned One Piece to not a 4Kids type show, but a show that literally insults the intelligence of the viewer. 4Kids definitely went overboard when editing the show, because in actuality, they didn't have to edit it out to the extent that they did, because it effectively removed any life from the show. Because as we all know, 4Kids assumed that the viewers of the show were basically just people who have never taken a step outside in the real world, and they basically just thought everyone was like, oh no, boobs, oh no, violence, oh no, actual human interaction with heart, then how that in my show because we're kids, and we're all socially in the dirty, dirty, dirt. Duh, I'm stupid, I like karate, duh. But the thing is, the show was actually popular with their target audience. They were making bank by dubbing all these shows, and whether they were good or not, they still made loads of cash for the company. At the time, they had Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Sonic X, One Piece, and many other anime under their belt that made them popular with kids. So in reality, they just thought they could do whatever the fuck they wanted to. They were unstoppable. The place for high speed action. High seas adventure. The kick butt capital of television. But if you thought 4Kids TV couldn't get any cooler, you don't know Joe. G.I. Joe Sigma 6 is reporting for duty. Let's do it. Don't miss all new episodes on 4Kids TV. Saturday mornings at 7 on Channel 7. And beginning August 27, pick up your free 4Kids TV sneak peek DVD at all Toys R Us stores while supplies last. If you haven't seen the movie yet, run. Don't walk to the nearest theaters right now. Go. I'm not kidding. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll still be in your VCR when...